I just want to explain a little bit about the sequence before I open up Navisworks. The, uh, by sequence I mean that Navisworks Manage is the product that lets you create the content um, that you can author and change. Navisworks Freedom is the viewer that will let somebody who doesn't have Navisworks Manage look at a particular file. So there's three different file formats and NWC is the cache file, that's really like your data. The, the, that data, that information can be linked into the Navisworks file in NWF, which is really, think of it as AutoCAD using reference files. It's a, it's a small file, but it has linkage to it for bringing data in. And then at some point when people want to review this, you, you'd create a, an NWD file, a, like a data file. And this is more like a snapshot in time where you want to send something out for review, get their comments, bring them back into Navisworks Manage and make, make any changes to fix any, any conflicts that have been identified for you. But for me now to go into Navisworks Manage, I'm starting with an empty an empty file here. So when I open it up, the first thing I've got are some options as to whether I want to open an NWC file or append NWC files or files of many other formats. And you'll, you'll see that when I bring up the, the menu. Uh, what I'm going to suggest is that it's it makes much more sense to actually append the NWC files because it's it's like I'm going to have a project file here and uh, then I'll be able to just think of this as a file that's essentially empty of content except for the links to the other files that have been appended. So when I, when I go in here and say append, um, I can go out, I can find the file that I just created. If you're not seeing the file, it's because there are all of these other formats that you can bring in. Vermal files, step files, stereo lithography, microstation, DWIF, FBX, say from uh, 3D Studio Max. Although you can also bring in a 3DS file. The one I'm after is this cache file. So I'm going to pick the one that we just created, open it up, and there's my, there's my project. Now I've got a, here, I've got an avatar figure. I just want to point out a couple of things here. Under the uh, application menu, if you look under options, before you start a project, you want to look at the, the viewpoint defaults and make sure that you've turned on this option that says the user can save or hide and require attributes. So that should be checked on that the user is able to override materials, you want to check that on. That, that would be something where maybe a user wants to specify a different color to, to make something highly visible. This is not about creating realistic uh, graphics on the screen, it's about making for better communication by maybe highlighting things in certain colors. Uh, under, under settings, um, if I go down to the these options, I'm going to leave these off, collision, gravity and auto crouch initially. You'll see that I can change them on the fly. And down here under third person, um, these are avatars that you can have. So when you're presenting your project, you might choose to have a construction worker, you might choose to have a, a dummy of a human figure or an office male or somebody wearing protective clothing. It's wherever, wherever you choose here, I, I'm going to I, I, you know, go with the option that I've got at the moment, but uh, that so that you know that's where you can change it. Notice that you won't see the change until you actually start to do a walkthrough, and then the change will become evident in the avatar character. But I'm I'm going to go with the options that I had picked as my default, and and I want to show just the pieces of the interface that I think are critical to doing a walkthrough. Right. So the first thing is the actually the steering wheel. So I'm going to bring the steering wheel out here. Um, the, the option I want to highlight is the ability to define where the pivot point is. So you see that if I uh, if I click on this in the orbiting, 
I'm, I'm, up, I'm turning around wherever the pivot point is, but I want to be able to control where I'm turning around. So on the center option here, I can position my pivot point. See what I'm doing? Clicking on center and holding. And I can go in and place the pivot point. One thing that's kind of critical here is you see that it's not going inside the building. So there are occasions where maybe you want to turn off the display of the roof so that you can place the orbit inside. But for the moment, I'm quite happy to say, you know, I'm going to put my pivot point somewhere on the patio around there. Um, other options on there uh, that you could do, and you can use those as you're recording a movie, is that you can, you can look around, meaning that you're turning. Let me put this back where I wanted to. You can walk, which is that you're going to uh, move the with the left mouse button down and dragging up the way I'm moving forward dragging down the way I'm moving back and the other option that's in there is up down is me changing the height you see that I'm actually moving the figure down here and and those are really all that you need from the the orbiter the critical one being the ability to to set the center of your pivot point like this I'm going to move this guy forward a little bit before I show you the the second option. So here I'm going to cancel the steering wheel. And now coming over to here, the navigation toolbar. Um, the, these have some useful commands. I'll just work from the top down. But but panning is also the same as holding shift. Uh, sorry, the the, uh, the shift in your left mouse button is panning. Um, window uh, and let me show the options zoom window would let me pick an area of my building and zoom in on it another useful one here is um, if I pick something in the building let me go back to uh, select if I pick something in my building I have an option that, let, that says zoom to select it with a fast key page down and zoom all with a fast key page up so that lets me kind of identify something and zoom right to it. If I go page down, so page down is zoom and then selecting something and page up is going to zoom me right into, into that option. So let me just select it. So page down to zoom in, and page up to zoom out. And then click on the screen to clear it. Um, here, orbiting options. That remember the the pivot point is something that you can control where where you're pivoting around. Um, looking, look around, look at, focus is that if I can pick on an object, and that's where my avatar will be looking. I'm going to do a Control Z to go back. Uh, show you this quickly again. If I say look at, and I'll pick the window, and see what's going on is that it's moving around. Control Z to go back. And uh, one other option I wanted to show under there was, um, I should all want focus. <coughs> Oops, uh, control Z. So the next thing I'm going to show here is the ability to walk forward um, or fly in the third person. It's actually gotten much easier because now on your uh, your view tab, so your uh, view, viewpoint tab, you've got these options presented in the navigation navigate palette so you can you can say walk and then under realism you can choose do you have collision gravity crouch third person is the third person on or is the third person switched off you can control all of that here so they work these commands work in association with this command which is the walk command right so with the walk on you see the, the pair of feet if I if I move forward and then I, I, I'm holding the left mouse button down to change direction. I can walk all the way through my building here and all the way through the objects. I'm going to turn around and come back out through my planters and turn around to where I'm at the beginning again. So my option here is that if I've got these options switched on, if I, I switch on gravity and collision, you can see I can't they're, they're, they're tied together the character will drop until he meets a surface 
So when I start to move forward, um, it'll adjust. Just uh, he must be colliding with the. There we go, the ground. So I'm just moving this. He's now on the ground plane, and as I move along, I don't know if you'll see this. There's a two-inch step up to the patio. Uh, not really seeing it. But uh, you'll see it when I'm inside the building. So at the moment, if I've got collision on and I try and go through something, you see that I bounce off of the bounce off of the do the the object that's there. So I'm going to move towards my building. I'm going to turn off collision gravity. That means that now I can walk through this. I'm going to turn to look towards the fireplace. And the reason I'm doing this is I want to show you the other options that are in here. When I've got collision and gravity and crouch switched on, my avatar responds to the environment. And if I move towards an area with a big brick overhead, you see that he crouches because he's tight for space. And you can set the head height so that he maybe responds to if he doesn't have a two foot clearance with piping or something that he would crouch down to, to indicate that you're, you're in a tight space. The other thing would be here, if I turn this a little bit, I'm going to move forward towards the furniture and you see he actually climbs up. So he's gone onto the table, standing on the table and then when he's too close to the roof um, he's ducking down, too close to the shelves in this case, he's ducking down. When he's clear of the table, so if I move forward again, I'm going to turn it around a bit, just move him forward. He, he jumps down from the table until he's back on the ground again, so then he jumped down. You'll see this in a bigger model in a second, but that's ba the basics of controlling the, the movement of the avatar within your, within your project.